Uh, this is the first video of the flipped classroom model for Multicultural Lit, so welcome. And um, what we're going to be talking about right now for this week is about context. Make sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, since this is not my classroom, it's my house, I'm a little bit limited as to my material. So, just so we're clear, you should be taking some notes. I'm not going to write everything down, but you should be thinking about context. Now, for those of you who were in AP Language and Composition last year, um, you know all about context. So you've got a little bit of a head start, and some of you perhaps have been in an English class um, with another teacher at the high school who talked about critical lenses. I know I do that in my classes. I know Mrs. Gothier does that. Mrs. Keenan has done it. Mr. Tavelli, And there's probably others that I'm not thinking about. Um, and when you learned critical lenses, you might have talked about archetypal lenses. Um, you might have talked about the feminist lens. And you may have talked about something called a biographical lens. And context, you can think about um, learning about it as also in um, a biographical lens. So, what is so important about learning the context of the author? Um, it can help aid you in understanding the author's message, uh, the argument, so to speak, or thematic purpose. And to get there, we have to do a little bit of work ahead of time. So, when we look at a piece of work, which we'll call the text, we can do this with film, we can do this with a lot of different things, um, but we'll call it the text, and at that point, then we want to sort of dive into the author's background, and we want to find out um, a little bit more about where he or she has come from. Because when we create work, whether it's music, or it's writing, um, or poetry, uh, we don't do it in a vacuum. Our experiences shape us and they, those teach us a little bit about you know, how we perceive the world and, um, and what we think about. So we want to think a little bit about where the, um, the author has come from. I'll make a little, another little note here. So we're also thinking of this as a biographical lens also equals this and it can be useful um, looking at a little of this because especially if an author comes from a culture that's not necessarily your own there may be cultural references and clues that you're not picking up on and we saw this already when we looked at the first uh, chapter and in introduction to Sherman Alexie's book um, we talked about it in the journal, for instance. What cultural references might you not get because of perhaps the time period or where um, Sherman Alexi grew up? Um, we're pretty far from the northwest of the United States, and I would guess that most of us have not probably stepped foot on a reservation before. Maybe a few people have. Um, and so knowing what those experiences are, um, might make it harder for us to relate to the book. However, you can still make a connection to a story, even if you don't have those pieces, um, by doing some of that background research. So, what you're going to do on Friday in small groups is start doing some of that research. So, one more note for Friday. We'll go for red this time. So Friday, research. And you're going to have time in class to do this. Um, hopefully, I am going to have laptops. I know that the laptop part does not have enough laptops for all students. However, if we do this in small groups, um, we can probably navigate around that. Um, what kinds of questions would you want to find out? So, um, what kinds of answers would you want to find out about Sherman Alexi? So you might do some thinking about that. Um, obviously there's sort of the basics, 
Um, you know, is he still alive today? Um, if this was his first book, which we know because he talks about that in the introduction, um, what's he been doing lately? Um, you might ask some deeper thinking questions too. Um, like, if one of the stories was when he was 19, he wrote it when he was 19, how old was he when he was, um, or what year was that? What other things were happening in his area of the United States or maybe the world at large? So there's a lot of different ways you can look at that. Um, and on Friday, again, when you actually are sitting down to do some of this, I'm going to be circulating around the classroom and giving you some tips and guidance. So that is what's happening coming up. And that's the end of the first lesson on context. Please let me know if you've got any questions um, and bring your thoughtful comments uh, with you to class and let me know how I can make this work better. Thanks.